finally came out today with the Wenzel boys. We got Ryan and Scott. Thank you guys for taking us out. We've been talking about it for a while. We wanted to try our, our hand at some sword fishing. They've been quite elusive to us so far. Been out a few times, haven't had any luck. So can only go up from where we're at. Exactly. Well, and sword fishing is always a hit or miss type of fishing, but I got, uh, got a good feeling. They've been biting a good bit lately, and uh, I think we'll hopefully we'll find one today. Yeah, well, appreciate you guys uh, taking us out. This is a beautiful 370Z from CV Boats. And you guys have probably seen it, the JL Audio wrapped CV that's had a lot of a lot of boat shows and tremendous sound system on this thing. So just like anything else, sword fishing is a trial and an error type thing. So you're always out here learning. That's the first thing these guys mentioned when we came out here, probably setting us up for mental failure. So, you know, we're just going to be that, yeah, that much more it's stoked when we land one, right? Exactly. Always set the expectations low. That way you're pleasantly surprised. That's the way to do it. Well, we're marking some bait. Tell us what we're looking at here. What are, what are we looking for? So uh, we're looking for some squid, some squid down there, nice clouds of bait. Um, and usually when you drop in there, you got a little better shot at, a, at getting a good bite. Um, hopefully, maybe even uh, we'll mark one throughout the day. That way we could uh, show you what it looks like if you actually just mark one. We got a pretty nice transducer from Aramar on here, so we can, uh, can mark a lot of stuff. Yeah, Simrad uh, setup looks good. And from what we hear uh, down deep, we haven't tried it ourselves, but we'll, we'll get a good look at it. it. Says it does an amazing job showed us some pictures on his phone. So, all right, let's make it happen, see what we can do. Yep, let's send a bait down. All righty, send her down. Four real fishing, baby. Calling five to 10. Obviously, it's not five to 10. I know you guys online are gonna say this is two feet or less, but what is it blowing, <laughs> 15, 20? Yeah, it's blowing 15, 20 today. 15, 20, it's supposed to get worse as the day goes by, but we decided to give it a shot anyway. Yeah, it's, it's out, not... of the, out of the north, northeast. So it's not our roughest direction that we can get. Southeast would be a little bit worse, but uh, still a little choppy for sure. Yeah, a little bumpy, not not too bad. Sword fishing tends to end up being, you know, you'll have a lot of, not always, but a good sometimes a good amount of bites, and you end up pulling a lot of fish off. Their mouths are very soft. Yeah. So unless you get them to choke it all the way down the hatch and swallow it, or hook them like kind of where it's in the bill, you know, you're it's playing with fire in terms yeah. of losing them. Well, I guess the challenge is what makes it exciting. Eh? Exactly. Okay. So running offshore on the 370Z, this one has triple 300 V8 Yamaha Verados on it. So we were cruising easy 36, 37 miles an hour, doing one, 1.1 miles per gallon, and hit up to 40 miles an hour, doing about 0.9. So very fuel efficient. This boat has a lot of flair to it. We're kind of in a following sea. So I did get some video on my phone of, of that bow at work. It definitely displaces a lot of water. Kept us dry the entire way through. It's just watching for the sake of watching because you're obviously going to the drag set on this. Uh, uh, it's going to pull or no? Pull so it, it, it's not going to hook itself. It's actually going to be you're watching the rod tip and you're looking for anything that breaks the rhythm of what it do, uh, it's doing. So any kind of little like double bounce like that was going to be a bite. And it's you it's look very for subtle. a second, you miss it, and it's not always just going to load up. So you see that little tap. Uh, or anything that breaks the rhythm, we like to sink it on them because it's hard to actually dig the hook into the fish by reeling on it when you're so far away from it. But that lead is a lot closer to the bait. So you sink that lead and that lead actually pulls that bait hopefully into the fish's mouth a little better. If not, he'll follow it around and maybe eat it again. Sometimes you just gotta play with them. They don't always get on it right away. And then a lot of times the bigger ones will slack you off. So your rod tip will just go slack and it'll start charging the surface. Right yeah, out of the gate? Right out of the gate. You just, we'd just be looking right now and our rod tip will just go slack. Really? Yeah, that's how the bigger ones eat. So what do you do in that circumstance? And reel as fast as the reel can go to try to get tight on him, because he's he's racing up fast usually. Do you feel that a day with a little bit of, you know, with the kind of slight rollers we have here today are, are better to be able to see that initial bite compared to a flat calm day where you're not even bouncing that lead much? Yeah, the calm day is not much moving going on, so anything that breaks that rhythm is pretty obvious. Oh, okay. On a day where you're bouncing up and down real hard, it can be a little bit harder to see the bite. Now, when you do technically or theoretically get a bite, how does it typically show up on the screen? Uh, does it, does you it won't, not matter? all the time you'll mark it. You'll, you'll mark it every now and then, but you know, for the most part, unless he's straight under the boat, which isn't always the case while you're fighting a fish, 
you're not going to mark them. the game plan with with everybody what do you want these guys to do get maybe get out of the way harpoon them um they're good to be wherever they need to be uh once the lead gets close scott's gonna stand right here and then uh and unclip the lead and once that lead's coming close you'll just have your finger on the butt and we'll kind of twist the rod since it's a swivel holder we can twist right. it towards scott and have him unclip it and then you just keep on reeling yeah okay. we don't want to stop the reeling you don't want to stop the reel once we... Once while the lead's coming out, you'll just keep your finger on it and Scott can stop the line with tanks. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So I'll keep my hand, I'll keep my hand on manual yep, keep your hand the on whole the way through. Yep, yep. And remember, once we get that lead off, it won't be able to auto reel anymore because once it hits zero on the counter, it stops being able to auto reel. Gotcha. One, and then, so basically also once the lead comes off, we want to back the drag off a of hair too. Since now that we have less weight on them, you know, we need less drag. Okay. You're like slightly... Yeah, go back to about the number two hash mark on there. Gotcha. 10 four. Sword fishing brought to you by Teaser Outfitters. Mike, no, I got you, buddy. Teaseroutfitters.com. I'm just easing them in, easing them in. Uh, is this your first? Let's see what happens. It's kind of fighting like a manatee or a loggerhead turtle. I'm just hoping that it's the right one here and it's actually a sword. So we're looking at the rod and it's it's pretty scoped out here, which means that that line is actually kind of angled up on the surface. And that's kind of a really good telltale sign that he's actually on there and uh, that it's just not the bait fouled up or something. Um, but it looks like we're gonna get him. What they're saying, these fish have soft lips so you can't horse them. We got the drag light, keeping pressure on them. We, we got color, yep, we got color. It's coming, it's coming. You got it? Look at it! Oh, oh yeah, baby! Nice. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> we did it! Broke the ice, yes, baby! Woo! Not a giant, but he's a keeper. Hey. That's a good looking fish right there. Maybe it'll right. taste even better. I just can't wait. That is awesome. I guess these things are done for yeah. Alright. charm. <laughs> it is incredible. All right, so this is what we came out for. Ryan Scott, four reel fishing, made it happen. This is the first swordfish for us right here, center oh, yeah. consoles only. Can't thank you guys enough. So, not gonna break any records, but definitely a respectable fish. And this is gonna be quite good at the dinner table tonight. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right, fellas, thank you. We already know that when we wanna have a good time on a boat, fishing. <laughs> Call up the boys for four reel. It was crazy, man. Awesome. Last time with the Mahi trip, now this time sword fishing. We've attempted three, four times and no luck. Uh, been pretty excited.
had a slow start, but it's all worth it. All right, we actually put one more drop down since we just got the smaller one. Looking for a, a slightly larger one. Figured we got one there. Let's try it again and, and hooked up within five minutes here. So let's see what number two brings up. This is the eyeball of the swordfish. It's, just, it's the first one that I actually catch. I'm gonna eat this thing. Apparently it's uh, some sort of ritual or they're just messing with me. But either way, I'm gonna do it. Cheers, let's go. Oh, I did it. <laughs> You're not supposed to chew it. You just you swallow, swallow it. <laughs> you chew it, it's gonna stop. You don't get, you don't, you don't get all the There's one more for whoever wants it. Uh, it's all right. I got it stuck in my teeth. <laughs> So we just wrapped up our fishing trip, sword fishing trip, with four real fishing team, fishing charters here at the Worldwide Sportsman in the Florida Keys. So I can highly recommend these guys. We've been out fishing with them twice, killed it every time, went out with an objective in mind, and got it done. So reach out to them. We're gonna put their information below, ask any questions you guys want, and hopefully you enjoyed that video. Time for dinner.